2013 started a lot of change for you. And the ensuing years that happens um, is probably the toughest part of your life. Is that accurate to say? Oh, yeah. You know, the, you know, from a personal standpoint. Absolutely. T- tell me where. Walk me through. To start, you know, walk me through this 2013, and and from a personal level, how things, how you were managing things, and how how you were able to deal with it. Obviously, it was well documented. You know, you you were suspended by NASCAR. Mm-hmm. What happens, and where where's your mind at that point? Well, 2012. You know, they moved me over with Eric. You know, Almarola, and we had Smithfield. You know, and it was That's 43 right. car. 2012. Um, and then 2013, you know, NASCAR took away, you know, changed some rules about some truck arm bushing, stuff like that. We had some pretty good tricks going on rear bar, you know, being able to set the timing on the rear bar and yeah. You so know, you're still you, being innovative. Very, very innovative. <laughs> yes. And taking a 400 pound spring and making it think it's 1500 pound spring with just having a rear bar in it, you know, so 2013, we struggled a little bit, um, as we struggled as a team, I just got to a point where, I don't know, I was just struggling personally. Mm-hmm. You know, I had some things going on in the background, you know, and just got caught up at the wrong place, wrong time, and like I said, just failed the, uh, failed the drug test and mm-hmm. went on to the, um, it was the day after um, that I, that happened. I, I remember the date. October 17th, 2013, it was 10 o'clock in the morning. I was at the nail salon <laughs> with my wife and got the phone call. Number comes up. It's 866 number. One of those numbers that you don't normally see. Tip- you don't see it unless it's a bill collector or something like that. Right, so that number you don't answer these no, days. No, <laughs> but I, I, knew, I knew that it was going to happen. I knew what happened. Really? Yeah. I knew, I knew it was, I, yeah, I, I knew that. That I wasn't gonna pass, and when I saw that number come up, I told my wife. I said, "Listen, I gotta go out in the parking lot and get this number." She said, "Who is it?" I said, "I just need to go get it." Damn. And uh, that was whoop, it. It was hard, and uh, they they called me, told me I had to go back inside and tell her she's getting her toenails, feet done, and you know she's like, it was it wasn't pretty. Yeah, yeah, I could imagine. You know, and then the phone calls after that I made, you know, were to. You know, first phone call I made was to the HR lady, Libby Gant, at Richard Payton Motorsports, and um, Sammy Johns was the competition director, and they had already known about it because NASCAR had already called them. And um, I called my mom. So right after that, the next phone call I made was to my mother. You you know, I remember all this, and, and it was documented. I mean, like you were you – were one of the top crew chiefs in the whole sport, and now you're going through this. So it obviously made news. Yeah. One of the things I remember, though, Todd, was that you seemed pretty determined right away to get back. I mean, like you weren't – is that is that uh, an accurate yeah. way of saying it? I, yeah. mean, like, I, I mean, I knew I made a mistake, okay? I got caught up in the wrong thing. I was doing the wrong – you know. That's it. I was just doing a bad thing. People make, people people make, make mistakes. mistakes. You know, they get caught doing stuff. Sure. You know, that aren't what you need to be doing. When I went down to the shop, uh, I was down there. That was ten o'clock. I was down at the shop at eleven thirty. You know, down in Concord, and uh, went in, saw Libby, saw Sammy. You know, they explained to me what they needed to do. You know, turn my hard card in, and all that stuff. And as soon as I walked out that door, as soon as I walked out the door, I called John Bobo, who hey. was in, John Bobo, yeah, who was in charge of uh, NASCAR substance abuse program, and told him, said, listen. I messed up, I know, but you tell me what I have to do to right. get back. Right. Because I'm better than this. Mm. You know, so. So how did that experience go? How was that, you know, getting back? Was it was, it, was it, it smooth? Was it successful? Was it? Yeah. yeah it was it, very, yeah, it was very it, successful. Did it, did it, did it stick? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, it was, it was something that, I mean, I mean, I just embarrassed my whole family. You know, me as a person, the su- success that I'd had, you know, talking about all the stuff, um, it wasn't me, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, I knew I had to do it, you know. And, you know, like I said, I had um, classes and, you know, taking random drug tests and things like that. I mean, it was just, you never knew whenever you, 
you were going to have to go do it. And um, I think that lasted from, let's say, 17th, so probably the middle of October, all of November, all of December, and I think it was uh, January 7th, right before Daytona testing, that I got reinstated. What's that feeling like? Good. <laughs> yeah, real good. You I know. bet. Yeah, so actually the uh, the night bef- the night I got the phone call from John Bobo, you know, that everything was good, I was reinstated. The next day, uh, me and my dad got in the car and uh, drove to Daytona and went to the January test at Daytona. And, you know, I wasn't going to hide. Walked around the garage, talked to Ed, Lenny Wood, um, all my friends, you know, and they're like, man, really? I'm like, yep, happens to the best of us. Yeah. And um, I saw Tommy Baldwin, and he said, hey, listen, when you get home, give me a call. And and you went to Baldwin's. Yeah. You, 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 that's where you spent 2014. Yeah, 2014 I was there and um, working with Reed Sorensen, you know, back the whole full season. And um, in the end of 2014, it was right before Thanksgiving, Tommy called me up shop. We are Thanksgiving holidays, and uh, Tommy says, I don't think I'm going to be able to race next year. I'm like, really? And he says, no. He said, but I got some people that are really, really interested in you. And I said, who's that? He said, um, Richard Childers, mm. Mike Dillon, Eric Warren. Mm-hmm. I'm like, at RCR? <laughs> he said, yeah. Because we were getting cars and stuff from them. And um, I'll never forget uh, that night that I got home. It's right before Thanksgiving. Um Richard called because um, Tommy gave me his number, and uh, he called and said, hey, listen, I want you to come uh, run this Xfinity program for me. I'm like, what do you mean run the Xfinity program? He's like, well, crew chief said, no, I want you to come be the competition director for these four teams. And I'm like, wow, okay. That's got to be an amazing feeling. I mean, like, oh. it's got to be this, if not more than even the reinstatement. I mean, it, now you got legit. Guy, I mean, at the top, this Richard is Childress. this is Richard Childress. This is Richard Childress. This is his Xfinity program, and you know, because you've driven his Xfinity cars, and I heard you talking about that Oreo car and all yeah. that stuff. His Xfinity program, the way he looks at it, is means as much to him or more than his Cup program. Yeah, you know, so I knew that and um, went down there, like I said. And, Talked to Mike Dillon, Eric Warren, and they put me in charge running, you know, with all those different different crew chiefs. And, you know, now I'm working with four different personalities. You know, I uh, had Shane, um, Mike Hillman Jr., uh, Danny Stockman, and um, Dick Harrison. Four totally different, four guys yeah. with totally different personalities and four totally different thoughts yeah. about how to make cars go fast. And what they want to do. So I was there 2015, 16. Um, and then I uh, went, like I said, went, Mike went down. Why did you do that? Like, okay, so you get this opportunity at Richards to, to sort of oversee this um, Xfinity program. You talked about how important that program is to Richard. And um, this, is a, this is a really great opportunity for you to sort of establish yourself back into the fold in the industry. What was the – what did that opportunity go away no. or what was the draw to make you leave and go to Levine family racing with McDowell? What was that draw? Well, in 2015, things were going so good with the Xfinity program. Mm-hmm. I mean, we were winning races and, uh, sitting on poles, cars were all like all four of them in the top six or seven in points. And, um, uh, Brian Scott come along and he wanted to go cup racing. And Richard says, I want you to come crew chief this fit, this car for for Brian Scott. I'm like, well, what about this other guy? Been here forever. Yeah. He said, no, Brian wants you because your relationship that you built with him with the Xfinity program, it just feels like your background, the way you talk about things, the way you do things, will really benefit it. And um, actually, I think I ran – so that was 15. I actually went to crew chief for AJ at JTG. Um at the end of 2015, a few races, mm-hmm. and then with Brian still driving, kind of like six or seven races with him, 
And then 2016, ran Daytona 500 with uh, Ty Dillon. So basically, I was kind of out of the Xfinity side of it, and he brought Gill. Yeah, and they Gil, were just you were just filling a filling a role here and yeah, there. Yeah, kind of doing the R and D stuff. Yep. Yeah, you know, pretty much for the Cup, you know, mm-hmm. the fifth Cup car, whatever you want to call it. Uh, crew chief Ty Dillon, um, Brian Scott, you know, different things like that, and then um, I went and crew chief for uh, McDowell. Mm-hmm. Bob Levine called, said, you know, told Richard, you know, because we had a relationship. So basically, two thousand sixteen. They made me. Uh, I lo- they gave me a title as the uh, the the RCR um, competition liaison, whatever for the um, alliance teams. Yeah. So basically, I was in charge of that oh, to, okay. to to give all the feedback, you know, from the setups and everything that was going on at uh, at the big house and wind tunnel stuff to these guys who don't have the money and, and yeah. stuff, but to make sure that. You know, the, the Alliance program, they're all getting the same information, you know, with everything. So um, that was with uh, Jermaine, and I think um, uh, Casey, Casey Mears was driving, and then uh, McDowell was driving 95 car, and then with JTG, it was uh, AJ. And then, like I said, end of 2016, Bob Lyon called Richards, hey, listen, I want this guy to come crew chief, crew chief for me. Time. Well, he actually wanted me to come just crew chief the last few races. And things went so well, you know, he said, uh, I'd like to have you full-time in 2017. So you did? Yep. How'd that go? Great. Yeah. My time with Michael McDowell um, reminded me a lot of the time with uh, DJ. Mm. How so? That relates. Because it's like me and him built a relationship. Like, here's the guy that's struggling. And he might be at the end of his career if he don't start doing well. Mm-hmm. I'm coming in kind of from a, a, a bad part of my career, and I want to make this whole program better, which we did. I mean, we, we ran fast in 2017. I can't help but ask you then, seeing Michael McDowell, fast forward to this year, I mean, like seeing Michael McDowell's success and winning the Daytona 500. Now I'm, you're an emotional guy. Yeah. When he crossed that finish line, what was your feeling? Oh, it was big. It was big. Did oh, you, yeah. Did you have a yeah. big, big cry? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was very happy for him. Yeah. yeah. I don't even know if he had got around to victory lane yet before I'd sent him a message. I was at home watching it and um, yeah. told him how proud I was. Um, he sent me a message back. He said, man, I appreciate it. Appreciate yeah. everything you did for me. Yeah. You know, because he left there uh, in 2017 is when, you know, Bob was going to bring in Casey, uh, um, Casey Kane, and they were going to bring in a crew chief from Hendrick to work with Casey, which was Travis Mack, which we had time with here. Um, so I was the odd man out again. Yeah. You know, so from there, kind of like been, it's been hit and miss. Yeah. But I'm still good. I'm still passionate. I can still make race cars go fast. Yeah. I, I wanted to ask you how how are you today? How are you doing? I'm good. Good. Yeah. Still emotional. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. that's look. That's, I think that's I think that's heart. I think that's an endearing quality about you, man. Yeah. I really do. And you know another thing, uh, I, I think when it comes to people's legacies, you know, for the most part, I can't speak for everyone, but for the most part, I think everyone's always looking for opportunities to forgive and show grace. Yeah. I think that's a human instinct for the most part, and all people require is just you know own. Own your flaws, man, yeah. and and don't sit there and try to be perfect and t- sit there and deny and, and you know make excuses, dude. You've owned everything, every part of you, I've made the mis- goods and the bads. I made mistakes. I know that. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I think that that that's an you know a lot of people ask Dale Jr. and I at times, but you know you got a lot of these young drivers and a lot of the you know seeking advice or whatever it is. Dale and I have gone and talked to you know a couple of rookie classes a time time or two, and I just wish I could tell them, listen. You guys are just going – you are going to screw up, and you are going to do things that may be embarrassing. Just own it. It's so much easier. Man, everybody wants to forgive. Just yeah. give them the reason to. I mean, you, you got you got one here now that's the passion and the heart and the will to win and just drive a fast race car, you know, yeah. in the last few weeks. He's got a lot of criticism. 
You must nope, be talking, talking about, about Noah. Noah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Noah. No. You know, I, I've been listening to yeah. uh, on Sirius XM, you know, some of the conversations, you know, he's had and stuff. I mean, it's hard. You don't want to take a guy with that much talent and just uh, just raw talent to go fast. You know, you just don't want to put the reins on him and just yeah. and pull him back. Yeah. You, you don't you don't you don't want to do that. Yeah. But you have to talk to him, you know, and you know, be I, that be that fa- you're that father figure. That's the hardest thing to try to figure out how to do is to try to tell a guy like that how to do things differently without doing it without doing it slower, right? No, yeah. No, I, don't because he has that fire and that tenacity yeah. in him, and I, yeah. I'm just kind of letting him run this year. It might be the wrong decision. <laughs> it might be the wrong decision, right? Hey. It might be the wrong choice to make. But I'm for right now. I'm gonna just let him keep going. The yeah. ki- the kid's a wheel man. He can drive. I think yeah. he's got a lot of talent. Yeah. And but he's young. He's got a he just he's, he's just, got a bunch more yeah. mistakes to make. Sure. And I'm not, and nobody's gonna be able to tell him anything nope. to avoid those mistakes. He's nope. got to go make them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just learn like from all them. of us. Yes. He learned learn from them. Yeah. If you don't learn, the thing is in this sport, sometimes you got to make If you mistakes. don't learn from the mistakes you made, mm-hmm. that's the problem. That, but it's not making the mistakes. It's not yeah. learning from them. And exactly. Sometimes, well, well, there's some mistakes you got to make a few times before it really comes through. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, not everybody is perfect. No, and, I know. And, no. and and is going to make the, yeah, make a mistake. You're, you're looking at one. Never make it again. Yeah, exactly. You know, you're going to make mistakes and continue to make that same mistake until finally yeah. you get, you get it figured out. Uh, but back to you, man. You you want to make it clear, like you still got some left in you. You got something in the tank. Yep, I do. Yeah. Yep. Do you want to hear the rest of that conversation with Todd Parrott? Well, you can by listening to the full podcast. The Dell Junior Download is available on all major podcast platforms.